Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Shashank and today we will discuss about the microbes in human welfare. So let's begin with the introduction. As we all know, microbes are diverse. Protozoa, bacteria, fungi and microscopic plant viruses, virions and also prions that are proteinaceous infection agent. Bacteria and fungi can be grown on nutritive media to form colonies which can be seen by naked eye and are very useful in study of microorganisms. Microbes can cause diseases in human beings, plants and animals. Several microorganisms are useful to man in diverse ways. They are found everywhere on the earth ranging from soil, air, water and some inhabitable places also. They are useful in antibiotics also. Microbes in household products A very common example is the production of curd from milk. Microorganisms such as lactobacillus and other commonly called lactic acid bacteria that is LAB grow in milk and convert it to curd. During growth, the LAB produces acids that coagulate and partially digest the milk proteins. It also improves its nutritional quality by increasing vitamin B12. In our stomach too, the LAB play very beneficial role in checking disease causing microbes. The dough which is used for making bread is fermented by using baker's yeast that is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Toddy, a traditional drink of some parts of southern India is made by fermenting sap from plants. Then cheese. Cheese is one of the oldest food items in which microbes were used. The large holes in Swiss cheese are due to production of a large amount of CO2 by a bacterium named Propioni bacterium shermani. The Roquefort cheese is a ripened by growing a specific fungus on them for a particular flavor. Here we can see the example of Swiss cheese and Roquefort cheese. Microbes in industrial production A number of products like beverages and antibiotics evolve use uses of microbes. Production on large scale requires growing microbes in very large vessels called fermenters. First, fermented beverages Saccharomyces cerevisiae used for bread making and commonly called brewer's yeast is used for fermenting malted cereals and fruit juices. To produce beverages like wine, beer, whiskey and rum. Wine and beer are produced without distillation whereas whiskey, brandy and rum are produced by distillation of fermented growth. Second, Antibiotics They are chemical substances produced by some microbes and can kill or retard the growth of other microbes. Penicillin was the first antibiotic to be discovered and it was a chance discovery. Alexander Fleming, while working on Staphylococci bacteria, once observed a mold growing in one of his unwashed culture plates around which Staphylococci could not grow. He found out that it was due to a chemical produced by mold and he named it penicillin after the, after the mold Penicillium rotatum. Later, Ernest Chain and Howard Florey made its full potential effective antibiotic. Chemicals, organic acids, enzymes and other bioactive molecules are commercially produced by microbes. Aspergillus nigger is used in making citric acid. Citric acid. Acetobacter acetate is used in making acetic acid. Clostridium butylicum is used in making butylic acid. Lactobacillus is used in making lactic acid. Saccharomyces cerevisiae is used in making ethanol. Then, Lipase is used in laundry detergents. Pectinase and protease is used in bottle juices. Streptokinase, that is Streptococcus bacterium, is used as a clot buster, that is to remove clots. Microbes in sewage treatment. Municipal waste water, that is sewage, contains large amount of organic matter and microbes, which are pathogenic and cannot be discharged into major water bodies like rivers and streams. Sewage is treated in sewage treatment plant to make it less polluting by using heterotropic microbes naturally present in sewage. 
Sewage treatment is done in two stages, that is primary and secondary. In primary treatment, floating debris is removed by sequential filtration. Greed, that is soil and small pebbles, are removed by sedimentation method. All solids that settle from uh, primary sludge and supernatant forms the effluent. The effluent from the primary settling tank is taken for secondary treatment. Here in the diagram, in the picture, you can see the primary treatment and secondary treatment and how the process occurs. Secondary treatment or biological treatment involves passing of primary effluents in large aeration tank to help the growth of aerobic microbes into flocks. Flocks are the masses of bacteria associated with fungal filaments to form mesh-like structure. These microbes increases the consumption of organic waste and decreases the BOD. BOD is biological oxygen demand of the effluents. BOD is the amount of oxygen that would be consumed if all the organic matter in 1 liter of water are oxidized by bacteria. It measures the amount of organic matter present in water. Greater the BOD of water, more it is polluted. Once the BOD of sewage water is reduced significantly, the effluent is then passed into settling tank where the bacterial flocks are allowed to sediment. This sediment is called activated sludge. Here in the diagram, you can see the aeration tank and the machine machinery which is used in sewage treatment. Then a small part of the sludge is pumped back into aeration tank to serve as inoculum. The remaining major part of the sludge is pumped into large tanks called anaerobic sludge di digesters. During this digestion, bacteria produce a mixture of gases such as methane, hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. These gases form biogas. The effluent from the secondary treatment plant is generally released into natural water bodies like rivers and streams. Microbes play a major role in treating millions of gallons of wastewater every day across the globe. Till date, no man-made technology has been able to revival the microbial treatment of sewage. The Ministry of Environment and Forest has initiated Ganga Action Plan and Yamuna Action Plan to save these major rivers of our country from pollution. Under these plans, it is proposed to build a large number of sewage treatment plants so that only treated sewage may be discharged in the rivers. Microbes in Production of Biogas Biogas is a mixture of gases produced by the microbial activity that can be used as a fuel. Certain bacteria that grows anaerobically on cellulosic material produce large amount of methane along with CO2 and H2. These bacteria are collectively called methanogens, that is, methanobacterium. These bacteria are also present in rumen of cattle. A lot of cellulosic material is present in the food of cattle and is also present in the rumen. In rumen, these bacteria help in breakdown of cellulose and play an important role in nutrition of cattle. Thus, the excreta, that is, dung of cattle, commonly called gober, is rich in this bacteria. Dung can be used for generation of biogas, commonly called gober, gober gas. Biogas plants helps in production of biogas. The technology of biogas production was developed in India mainly due to the efforts of Indian Agricultural Research Institute, that is IARI, and Khadi and Village Industries Commission, that is KVIC. The biogas plant consists of concrete tank in which bio waste are collected and slurry of dung is fed. A floating cover is placed over the slurry which keeps on rising as the gas is produced in the tank due to the microbial activity. The biogas plant has an outlet which is connected to a pipe to supply biogas to nearby houses. The spent slurry is removed through another outlet and may be used as fertilizer. The biogas thus produced is used for cooking and lighting. Microbes as biocontrol agents. Biocontrol means use of biochemical method for controlling plant disease and pest. The chemical used as pesticides and insecticides are harmful to human beings and animals. Biological control of pests and disease is a method of controlling pests on natural prediction 
rather than chemicals. The organic farmer creates a system where the pests are not eradicated but kept at manageable level by complex system of check and balance within the living and vibrant ecosystem. For example, the ladybird and dragonflies are used to get rid of aphids and mosquitoes respectively. On brassicas and fruit tree to control butterfly, caterpillars, bacteria, bacillus thuringiensis is used. Biological control developed for use in the treatment of plant disease is the fungus trichoderma. Trichoderma are free living fungi that are very common in the root systems that control several plant pathogens. Baculoviruses are pathogens that attack insects and other arthropods. The majority of baculoviruses used as biological control agents are in the genus Nucleopolyhedrovirus. These virus viruses are excellent candidates for species specific narrow spectrum insecticidal applications. Microbes as biofertilizers. Biofertilizers are organisms that enrich the nutrient quality of the soil. The main sources include bacteria, fungi and cyanobacteria. The root nodule formed by rhizobium bacteria on root of leguminous plants increase the nitrogen level of soil. The necessary for this is necessary for various metabolic processes. Azotobacter and azospirillium are free living bacteria that live in soil and fix atmospheric nitrogen into organic forms. Symbiotic association of fungi with angiosperm plants that is mycorrhiza also increase the fertility of soil. Glomus form mycorrhiza, mycorrhiza that absorbs phosphorus from the soil and passes it to the plant. These microbes also provide benefits like resistant, resistance to root borne pathogens, tolerance to salinity and drought. Cyanobacteria that is nostoc or anabena and autotropic microbes found in aquatic and terrestrial environment fix atmospheric nitrogen. In paddy fields, this acts as important biofertilizer. Blue-green algae also add organic matter to the soil and increase its fertility. Thank you so much. For the more information, you can visit our website where you can find all the materials and questions related to this topic. Thank you so much.